Good morning, Grade Nines. Today we're going to look at factorizing. Um, factorizing is a very important chapter. We use it in a lot of other chapters in mathematics, such as equations, where you want to solve for x. We also use it in functions, where we want to work out the the um, x-intercept and so on. So please pay attention. This is very important work, and um, it is new to you guys. You don't know this yet. Now we get. A few types of factorizing. The first one we're going to look at today is taking out a common factor. We're also going to look at difference into squares and trinomials, but let's concentrate first today on taking out a common factor. All right, here we have five examples. Let's look at the first one. In the first question, we or expression, we have four terms, but we cannot add or subtract these terms because they're not liked terms. Okay, but there is something that is common in all four of them. If you look at the numbers 3, 12, 6 and 9, what is the common factor that I can take out? What is the biggest, the highest common factor that I can take out? That will be, I hope you all agree with me, 3. Then we look at all the variables in this expression. Can you see that there is something that is common in all four of these terms? Here we have an A another a, there's an a, and in the last term there's an a as well. So we can also take out an a that is common. Now we need to go determine what will be left inside the brackets after we took out that 3a. Now guys, I know you don't want to work extra, but please do the following at least just for this example, or for this exercise, all right? So, how we determine what's left in the bracket is we take our first term, there's the first term. The first term is 3abc, just write it somewhere in pencil. And you divide it with the common factor that you took out, which is 3a. Now you will see the 3s will cancel out, the a's will cancel out, and what is left? Only bc. Alright, now I keep this plus here, sorry. Now I take the second term. The second term, the second term is 12ab. So I write it somewhere and I divide it with a common factor that I took out, which is 3a. Now we know that 12 divided by 3 is going to give me 4. Okay, so we're done with that. The a's will cancel out and there is a b that is left. Okay, I keep the sign there which is a negative. Now I take the next term, which is 6ac, and I divide it with a common factor, which is 3a. We know that 6 divided by 3 is 2. The a's will cancel out, and there is a c that is left. And now for the last term, 9ad. I divide it with the common factor that I took out, 9 divided by 3, oh, I forgot the sign there, 9 divided by 3 is 3, the A's will cancel out, and I have a D that is left. Alright, there is your answer, that is it. If you want to go check your answer, if you want to check if you did this factorizing correct, then in pencil you can quickly multiply that 3A back into this bracket. That means I have to multiply it again with everything that's inside the bracket. Okay? Let's quickly do that. 3a times bc will give me 3abc. 3a times a positive 4b will give me a positive 12ab. 3a times that negative 2c will give me negative 6ac. And that 3a times the negative 3d will give me a negative 9ad. And that is the question that we started with. I know that I am correct. But please, don't do that every time. That's, this is just to check yourself, okay? So that answer that is written in black, that is your final answer. Okay, let's look at question number two. Here in question number two, we have two terms in the expression. 
So in the answer in the brackets, there also have to be two terms. Right. Now between 6 and 12, what is the highest common factor that I can take out? I hope you all agree with me that it is 6. Okay? Now guys, I see there is x's and y's in both the terms. But the highest x that I can take out is just x to the power of 1. I can't take out x squared because here I don't have x squared. Alright? And I see that there is a y in both these terms. So I take out, sorry, a y as my common factor as well. Right, now we have to determine what's going to be left in the brackets. So I take the first term, please do this in pencil somewhere. And I divide it with a common factor that I took out. Sixes will cancel out, y's will cancel out. And we know that x squared divided by x is just x. Keep the negative there. Now I take the second term, which is 12xy, and I divide it with a common factor that I took out, which is 6xy. The x's will cancel out, the y's will cancel out, and we know that 12 divided by 6 is just 2. Two terms in the expression when I started, two terms in the brackets when I'm done. Question number three. We have to factorize this expression. We have three terms in the expression. Now, the only thing that is common in all three of those terms is 5. I can take out, and the, the highest common factor that I can take out here is 5. I hope you all agree. Now, we have to determine what's going to say, what's going to be left in the brackets. Okay, please, guys, do this. Write down the first term, and you divide it with what you took out. I can't take out an x as the common factor as well because here in the last term there is no x. Okay, so 5 is the highest common factor that I can take out. Alright, we said we take our first term and you divide it with a common factor that you just took out. And 15 divided by 5 is 3 and the x squared will be left. Alright, now I take the second term. I keep the negative there. The second term, which is 25x, and I divide it with a common factor that I took out, which is 5. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. And the x will also be left. And I keep the sign. And here, here guys, this is very important. You take the last term, which is 5, I'm going to write it here. And I divide it with a common factor, which is 5. And yes, I know you will say that 5 and 5 will cancel out. But what is the answer when I say 5 divided by 5? It's not nothing. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Please write the 1 there. And please look, we had 3 terms in the expression when we started, and we have 3 terms left, 1, 2, 3, in the answer when I'm done inside the brackets. Okay, let's look at question number 4. Now, question number 4 is a bit different than the rest that we've done. We've done. Okay, can you see that there's only two terms in this expression, 1 and 2. And what do you see is common in both these two terms? Isn't it just the bracket a plus b? So I'm going to take out the common factor, and the common factor is a plus b. Now I have to go determine what's going to be left inside the brackets when I'm done. Again, do the same thing. Take your first term, this was your first term, right? And you divide it with the common factor that you just took out. Please, the common factor must be in brackets, if it is brackets. Now I can see that this whole bracket will cancel out with that whole bracket. So what's going to stay left? 4x. I keep this negative here. And I do the same with the last term. My space is a bit, um, not that much here. Let me just write it here. 3y bracket a plus b is the last term. And I divide it with a common factor that I'm taking out. The brackets will cancel out. And what's going to be left? 3y. Okay. Last example here. Question number 5. I have three terms in the expression when I start, and now I have to take out the highest common factor. Between 6, 3, and 9, the highest common factor that I can take out is 3. 
Can I take out an X? Yes, there's an X, X, and another X. But the highest X that I can take out is X to the power of 1. I can't take out X to the power of 2 because here in the second and third term, I don't have an X to the power of 2, all right? And there's also a Y in all three of these terms. Y, Y, there's a Y squared. But the highest Y that I can take out is Y to the power of 1. Okay, so then I write down my first term somewhere, x squared y, and I divide it with the common factor that I just took out. 6 divided by 3 is 2. x squared divided by x is just x, and the y's will cancel out. Okay? Now I take the second term, I keep the negative there. The second term is 3xy, and the common factor that I'm taking out is also 3xy. Yes, everything will cancel out. Y and Y will cancel, X and X will cancel, 3 and 3 will cancel. But guys, what is this answer? It's not nothing. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Please write that 1 there. Then the last term. 9XY squared divided by 3XY. 9 divided by 3 is 3. The X's will cancel out and Y squared divided by Y is y to the power of 1. There you go. Alright, please do the following on your own. It is exercise 16.3 and I think it's on page 179. And you have to do that whole exercise. Okay, so the teacher that's invigilating um, in this class right now, please pause this video so that you can finish the exercise on your own. And then when you are done, or tomorrow, the next day, we're going to mark this exercise. Alright, so guys, let's look at this exercise. Question number 1A. Between 5, 10 and 25, what is the highest common factor that I can take out? That will be 5. Alright, oh no, wait. There is something common in all three of those terms. Can you see that? A, 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 and another A. So I'm taking out the A as well. Remember, I must take out the highest common factor. Okay? And now I must determine what's going to stay left in the brackets. So please, guys, do this somewhere. Take your first term, which is 5AC, and divide it with a common factor that you just took out. And you will see the 5s will cancel out, the a's will cancel, only the c is left. Next one, I take the 10 AD, AB, which is my second term, and I divide it with 5a, which is the common factor. 10 divided by 5 is then 2. The a's will cancel out, and there's a b that is left. Then again, keep the sign. You take your last term, which is 25AD, and you divide it with a common factor, which is 5A. The A's will cancel out. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and there is a D that is left. Three, ex uh, three terms in the expression when I start it, and three terms in the brackets in my answer when I'm done. Alright, let's look at question number B. In question number B, B, there is also three terms in the expression when I start and now I'm looking for the common factor that I can take out and I see between 7, 21 and 35 I can take out 7 that will be the highest common factor and the highest x that I will be oh, that I can take out is x squared okay now I have to go determine what's going to be left inside the brackets so you take your first term and you divide it with a common factor. Now guys, remember we said when everything cancels out, the answer is not zero, it's not nothing, the answer is one. I keep the negative there. Now I take the second term. The second term is 21x to the power of 3. I divide it with a common factor. 7x squared. Now 21 divided by 7 gives me 3 
and x to the power of 3 divided by x squared is just x. I get the negative, then I take the last term, which is 35x to the power of 4, and I divide it with a common factor, which is 7x squared. And now 35 divided by 7 is 5 x to the power of 4 divided by x squared is just x squared. Three terms in the expression when I start it and three terms inside the brackets when I'm done. Question C. The highest common factor that I can take out here is 8m. Okay. Now the first term is also 8m and I divide it with a common factor that I just took out. Everything cancels. But the answer that's left is 1, because 8 divided by 8 is 1. Keep the minus, then 24mn is my second term. I divide it with a common factor. 24 divided by 8 is 3. The m and m will cancel out, and there is only an n left. There you go. Let's look at question D. Alright guys, to find that common factor between these three terms, let's look at the 30, 15 and the 5. Between those three numbers, I can take out a 5. That's a common factor, definitely. But I cannot take out a G because there's no G in the last term. I can't take out an F because there's no F in the first term. And I can't take out an H because no, there's no H in the second term. So 5 is the highest common factor that I can take out. Alright? Now... To determine what's left inside the brackets, you take the first term, which is 30gh, and divide it with 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6, and the g and the h will be left there. Plus, okay, the second term is 15fg, and we divide it with a common factor. 15 divided by 5 is 3. The F and the G will be left. Alright, I keep the sign there. Go, just shift this bracket a bit further like that. Alright, now I take the last term, which is 5FH, and I divide it with a common factor, which is 5. The 5 and the 5 will cancel out, so there's only FH left. Now, always go check in your brackets. There's no like terms, so yes, I did take out the, the highest common factor. And I started with three terms in my expression, and I ended with three terms inside the brackets in my answer. So yes, I'm correct. Alright, question number two. Yeah, the highest common factor between 7 and 14 will definitely be 7. And the highest x that I can take out is only x to the power of 1. But the highest y that I can take out is y squared. Alright, what will be left inside the brackets? I take the first term, 7x squared y to the power of 3, and I divide it with a common factor that I just took out, which is 7xy squared. The 7 will cancel out. x squared divided by x is just x, and y to the power of 3 divided by y squared is y. Keep the negative there. Now I take the last term, which is 14xy squared, and I divide it with a common factor, which is 7xy squared. The x and x will cancel out, y squared and y squared will cancel out, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. Alright, 2 terms in the expression when I started and two terms in the answer in the side of the brackets. Remember you can always go check your answer. You can always go back to the first expression when you, um, that you started with just to see if you were um, if you factorized it correct. You can say this common factor you multiply just into the brackets with each term and that should give you that's 7x squared y to the power of 3 minus the 14x y squared, okay? So you can check yourself like that. Let's look at question B. Okay, there's two terms in the question. 
between 18 and 42, what is the highest common factor that I can take out? All right, between 18 and 42, I think that's going to be 6. Okay. And between p to the power of 3 and p squared, the highest p that I can take out is p squared. Okay. So, for the to determine what's left inside the brackets, I take the first term, which is 18p to the power of 3, and you divide it with a common factor, 6p squared. 18 divided by 6 is 3. p cubed divided by p squared is just p. I keep the negative. And now you take the last term, which is 42p squared. And you divide it with the common factor, 6p squared. Alright. And 42 divided by 6 is 7. And the p squared and p squared will cancel out. Alright, I'm done. Inside the brackets here, I'm here now. Inside that brackets, there's no like term. So yes, I did take out the highest common factor. Alright. To see on top there, the highest common factor that I, can that I can take out here, it looks like it's going to be 7. Do you agree with me? Okay, and that's not all that I can take out. There's an A, there's definitely an A that I can take out, and another A in all three terms. Alright, so 7A is the common factor that I can take out. Okay, so the first term, 5AB divided by the common factor, which is 7A. Oh, sorry, it's 65, not 5AB, 65AB, all right? 65 divided by 7, that's going to give me 8. The A's will cancel out, and there's a B still left. Minus, the next term is 14A squared divided by the common factor of 7A. 14 divided by 7 is 2. A squared divided by A, there's going to be an A left. And then the last term, 49A divided by 7A, the common factor. 49 divided by 7 is 7. And the A and A will cancel out. That's the end of my bracket. Okay. Please remember that you can check yourself. You can multiply this 7a back into the brackets with all three terms. And that should give you the expression that you started with. And also, oh sorry, sorry guys, I see a mistake here. Um, I said the a's will cancel out, so that means that a, yo, <laughs> sorry, that a is not there anymore. It cancelled out, okay, sorry about that. Good. Let's look at question D. Three terms in the expression. So remember, there must be three terms in the brackets when I'm done in my answer. Okay, and the highest common factor that I can take out here will definitely be 4x. I can't take out x squared, for example, because here is no x squared. There's only an x, so that's the highest x that I can take out. Okay, so what will be left inside the brackets? Guys, I know this is irritating, but please do this just for this exercise, okay? Say the first term, which is 4x cubed, divide by the common factor, which is 4x. The 4 and 4 will, will, will cancel out, and x cubed divided by x will be x squared. Right, keep the negative. The next term is 8x squared, divided by the, com the common factor that you took out, which is 4x, and we know that 8 divided by 4 will be 2, and x squared divided by x will just be x. Keep the plus. Now the last term is 12x, and you must divide that with a common factor of 4x. The x and x will cancel out, and we know that 4 divided by 12 is 3. And there's no like terms in that brackets anymore, so I know I took out the highest common factor. Okay, question number three is a bit different. Okay, I have two terms here. That's term one and that is term two. Now, if you look 
at these two terms. What do you see is the common factor between these terms? Do you agree that it will be this bracket to uh, um, a minus 2b? I think so. All right. So now I must determine what's going to be left inside the brackets. Okay. Again, you take the first term, which is 2x, and then this bracket of a minus 2b, and you divide it with a common factor that you all said will be a minus 2b, or all thought that. <laughs> and that whole bracket will cancel out with that bracket, so the only thing that's going to be left is 2x. And then I keep this negative here. All right. And I take the last term. The last term is y bracket a minus 2b. And you divide it with a common factor, which is a minus 2b. And that whole bracket will cancel with the one at the, in the uh, denominator. So the only thing that's going to be left here is y. That was easy, right? Alright guys, please be careful at question 3b. These brackets here, they look the same, but they're not the same. Let me show you an example. Let's say for instance that x was 5 and y was 2. Alright, so then in this case, 5 minus 2 will give me an answer of 3. And here, 2 minus 5 will give me an answer of negative 3. So these brackets are not the same. But I can go make them the same by doing the following. I keep the first term right just as, as it is. But then I change this sign. It was a positive. Now I change it to a negative. And that caused this um, terms inside the bracket to swap around. X minus Y. This is a very important step. You have to do that. All right. And now it's clear that in these two terms, the x minus y and the x minus y, that bracket is the highest common factor that I can take out. Okay. And if I do that, what will be left in the first term? It is the 3a that will be left. And in the second term, it's the minus 2b that will be left. Okay, let me show you how I got that. I took the first term, which is 3a x minus y, and I divided it with a common factor, which is x minus y. So the brackets cancel out, cancelled out, and then there was only the 3a left. Okay, the same with the second term. It was 2b x minus y, and I divided with a common factor. Okay, so the brackets cancelled out and that's, there's only left the 2b. Right, c is quite tricky as well. Okay, so here I have my first term. There's the second term. Okay, and the common highest common factor here is the bracket a minus 3. Okay, but to determine what is left, this is very important, guys. Okay, guys, and... I see a lot of um, mistakes um, when you get a question like this. Remember to take the first term, this was the first term, and divide it with a common factor, and we decided that this a minus 3 is the common factor, and the whole bracket will cancel out yes, but that answer is 1. Okay? Then I keep the plus, I take the second term, and I divide it with a common factor, they will cancel, and there's only a B left. All right. Guys, this one here is very, very important. It has to be there. Okay. Remember I said I started with two brackets in my expression, and there must be two um, terms in my, in my answer when I'm done. One, two. Okay. The last question, D. This is term 1, there is term 2, and it is clear to us that the bracket x minus 1 is the common factor that I can take out between both of, of in, um, out of both of those two terms. So, how do I determine what's going to be left? 
okay? I take the first term, which is x minus 1 squared, and I divide it with a common factor, which is that bracket, like that. Now, guys, this is the same as x squared minus x. What is this answer? This will be x to the power of 1, right? So the same with this question here. The same happens here. Okay, so the answer of this will be x minus 1. That is left. So here, I put the x minus 1. Um, let me just put it in little brackets like that. I keep this negative here. There's the minus. And now I take the last term. Remember, this is the last term. And I divide it with a common factor that I take out, took out. And remember, I said when everything cancels, the answer is 1. So there's a 1 left. Okay, now that answer is perfectly correct for us. But if you want to go further, you can remove these little brackets here. Let me show you. You can remove these brackets here. Um, there's nothing that I have to multiply out there, so I can just remove it. So then there is a x minus 1 minus another one. And then uh, th that x minus uh, that minus 1 minus another one will just be minus 2 then. Let me just remove this. Okay. I hope you understand. Guys, please ask us anything. If you are unsure, we will gladly help to explain it again to you.